Hi everybody, I'm Jeff. And I'm Linda. And welcome to another edition of the VAPI Fireside Chats. We're sitting here by the campfire mm -hmm. at Bear Tree. Got in here like two o'clock in the morning last night. Mm -hmm. So this is technically our second night here, though last night was kind of like a half a night. Half a night, yeah. So we got a chance to explore a little bit and really cool place yes we've been putting together some videos from this place on our slalakum channel mm -hmm. s-l-a-l-a-k-u-m we're gonna pose some questions here yes linda's gonna ask me one i'm gonna ask her one we're gonna see how each other responds of course keep in mind drop your questions down below and we would like to get to them uh, also when you do that keep in mind that these are recorded well in advance so yeah. It, it may take a couple of weeks before you see your question actually responded to on here. Right, and also keep in mind that we're in a campsite that is, you know, surrounded by other campsites, other campers. So we may have to keep our voices down just a little bit more than we normally would if we're sitting on our backyard. Right. Um, and, you know, we try, to, we try to talk as loud as we can without disturbing anybody else. Absolutely. So, Jeff, every time we go camping or every time you go camping, there's always some sort of story that is created to almost like a legend that you guys come up with. Um, at Lackawanna, there's the story of Lackawanna Larry. This is sort of a tradition with your family, correct? To come up with some sort of story. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I would like you to tell the story that you told earlier about mountain laurel mountain laurel now this is kind of a campfire tale from beyond the grave it's not really a fireside chat is it sure okay <clears throat> well the story goes like this when you leave bear tree and you head out the next road you intersect with is Jeb Stewart Highway. Now, Jeb Stewart was a well-known Confederate general. And according to legend, he came through this area recruiting soldiers to go defend against Sherman's march to the sea. As Sherman marched through Georgia and all the way out to the sea, just wreaking havoc, burning everything down. So Jeb Stewart was... He, his army was worn thin by this point, so he was recruiting any able-bodied person that he could. Now, the name of the mountain that we're on is actually Rogers Mountain. So this is named after one Corporal John Rogers, who was recruited in this area by Jeb Stewart. And sure enough, went down to battle Sherman as he marched to the sea. And Corporal Rogers actually fell in battle uh, in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, he was engaged to a woman named Laurel who lived across the holler from him. And every day she would walk through that holler uh, out to the road to see if he was coming back. And sure enough, like I said, he died at battle. She, she never came back. So legend has it that one night she went walking through the holler and she was crying all along. She was crying because she was so heartbroken that he was gone away from her and she was so worried that he was never going to come back. Well, she never returned. No one knows what happened to Laurel. She disappeared in the holler. But it's said that on certain June nights, she blooms in the moonlight and you can see her walking among the holler and walking among the mountains and her cries can still be heard echoing through the night. Now, according to this legend, wherever her tears fell, mountain laurel started to grow. So all this mountain laurel that we see up here at this campground actually came from the tears of Corporal Rogers, not widow, but his fiance who disappeared in these mountains and was only seen again as an apparition so 
what you've just heard is one example of the stories that Jeff comes up with. Completely made up. That's not a real, not a real thing. thing. It's not a real legend, but what an amazing legend and what a good explanation for how this mountain laurel came to be so prevalent in this area. Right. And of course the mountain laurel grows in other parts of Virginia and, and, and in other surrounding states. Pennsylvania, well. yeah, everywhere Pennsylvania, else. Yeah, she everywhere. got around. She yeah, cried she, all over the place. She did. She went all around crying all over the place. But but I, th I think it's interesting the stories and the legends of local communities. You always find these stories um, that a lot of times include a ghost. For us down in um, a local area called Pocosin, it's um, the the story of Dolly Mammy. Yes. Dolly's Mammy is, is technically the, the correct way of saying it. But this is a story that I'd heard from since I was very young. Very but that's young. true. And it is. It that's is. true. There that's actually certain... traced back to a real person and right. people that claim to have witnessed that stuff. But the funny thing is that you think about all these local legends and you wonder which ones were actually completely fabricated by somebody like Jeff. Told around a campfire. Around a campfire and it yeah. just for some reason spreads like wildfire. And other ones that you think are rooted in some truth. Right. You know, rooted in truth and, and that have maybe been changed a little bit here and there through the years. But local folklore is one of those things that is just amazing to me because of that reason. Because that, that in, it, in and of itself is a mystery. You never know exactly what the origins of these tales are. And, and you never quite know, you know, what what's truth and what's not right but it's a story and of course you know like i'm part irish and irish people like stories nothing like a good <laughs> whopper for the irish people yeah, right and i don't right. mean the burger king whopper yeah, yeah yeah but uh yeah i wanted you to tell that story because it was so well fabricated you know <laughs> <laughs> and what a story for this local area with jeb stewart and everything yeah, you know like, yeah. like you tie it into the civil war and that's like you know reminds me of uh of of like what's that Forrest Gump, you know, totally fabricated story, but they were able to interweave like truths, you right, know, and historical facts into this, and I think that's I think that's a really cool thing. Right, and I added on there earlier that you know, people will approach her, they'll see her in, on these June nights, just this white, wearing this white flowing dress and. Yeah. You know, you can't really see her feet. She just kind of glides along, long yes. auburn hair. But when you approach her and she turns around, her eyes are just black pits <laughs> because she cried her eyes out. You get it? <laughs> so kind of a creepy factor to throw in there. Yeah. But the one uh, we actually did a little, a very, very amateur short film about it was pretty funny i think it's got some humor it's got more humor in it than it does anything scary but the lackawanna larry legend and it, if you wait till the end of this video i'll have it pop up down at the corner so you can click on it yes and check it out if you want to it's on our slalakum channel right because we like to include like folklore and stuff like that on the slalakum channel exactly and just to give you a little bit of background <clears throat> this is a um an annual sort of um you know camp camping expedition that his family takes yeah so every everybody that you see in there is all his family right and it's kind of it's funny it is really funny but Lackawanna is not the greatest campground in the world but it's just tradition it's just sort of a tradition yeah my family's family. been going there since they opened in 1977 and it's been a family reunion spot ever since yeah but it's got a cool a little story, story with line. it, a little history where there actually was, and, and that's where this ghost story is based. I'm not going to give any more away, but right. there was a little uh, a, a little yeah. town that was flooded. Yeah. They dammed up the town, the stream that went through the town, and flooded right. it out to make the Lackawanna Lake, and right. that's what this story is based, based upon. upon. So, yes. Yeah, check that out. We'll, we'll link it at the end yeah. here, and then let us know if you checked it out, because I want to see how many people actually watch that. Right. <laughs> So, Linda, mm -hmm. speaking of mountain folklore, yes, uh, I like to kind of keep the theme the same in these campfire chats because right. it makes it easier for me to come up with a title for each one. Yeah. You know. Bug. What is the most disturbing 
like we've all heard that story that has stuck with us, mm-hmm. maybe given us nightmares as a kid or as an adult. Yeah. What is the most disturbing folklore or folk tale that you have heard from the mountains? I don't know how much of a folk tale this is, um, but the most disturbing story that I've heard or the most disturbing report of paranormal activity that I've heard from the mountains is actually the one that spurred this um, this documentary or this, this series uh, that I started to watch a little bit of, but honestly, I'm not crazy about the people who actually did the, the video themselves. Um, it's a man and his wife, and it was based upon the story of this man who had um, left his local community to move up into the mountains. I believe it was the mountains of Kentucky. And when he had moved into this place, he kind of kept to himself a little bit. Um, but he started to experience some strange activity around his house. In particular, he would start to see these little creatures, these little figures. And I think he said that they were just tall enough to peep up in the windows of his house at night. He would see the tops of their heads poking up above the windowsill as they were looking in at him. And he realized that these were coming out of this local cave, this cave that was on his property. And he decided that these were aliens, that they looked like the little gray, the the grays, right? The one that we call the grays. Um, These little gray creatures with these huge, round, almond-shaped black eyes. And realized that they were coming from this cave on his property. And it freaked him out quite a bit. I mean, he didn't really know what quite what to do about it. Um, there was a story about him going out, hearing something outside one night. And he would walk outside and he would, you know, see this thing out by his barn at the front of his barn. And the barn had a light that would shine down. And um, he could see this thing in, in the light of this, in front of this barn. It was really creepy because you think what are the aliens doing way down in the in the caves you you hear these stories if you do enough research in in alien activity you hear stories of them um in their ufos diving down into the water around florida you know off the coast of florida is that our mouse rolling the bean pot <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, Or you hear stories of people being out on a dock and fishing, and this all of a sudden this UFO shoots up out of the water, and it's always off the coast somewhere. Um, You hear a lot of stories about, you know, theories, really, about them living within the earth, living down inside the earth. Um, And I think that's all fascinating because you just don't, quite know what the capabilities are of a UFO, if they're able to live underwater, if they can dive down into the water and and create a whole community under there in such a deep depth that we're not able to go down there ourselves and see what's down there. And it makes you kind of think about, um, you know, the possibilities there and the possibilities of them living deep within the earth as well what community or what sort of what what could they have created down underneath there underneath the ground and what is their purpose is it just to hide or they are they are they actually doing something under there um you know under our noses that we have no idea what they're doing they could be creating nuclear weapons and ready to blow the earth up from the inside out we just have no idea but um that's probably one of the creepiest stories i've ever heard is, is that story of these aliens coming out of this little cave and, you know, go running around this guy's property, scampering around his property in the middle of the night. And, uh, you know, he's just trying to, he's just trying to retire and have a good life, and, you know, and all of a sudden these aliens are taking over his property and, and, uh, messing with this kids, with the kids toys that are left outside in the middle of the night. And, uh, just a really, really creepy story. Makes me wonder too, though. Mm-hmm. Are they aliens, or have they always been there? Could be. They could be both. They could be aliens. They could have always been there. 
these could be aliens that have been occupying our our earth for hundreds of years and we would have no idea because there may have been stories or legends that were told of these little gray creatures maybe they would have called them gnomes or maybe maybe in the old days they would have had some other explanation for what they were uh, but you know, there's also been crazy stories from miners um, that that these miners were stuck in a in a disaster in an emergency situation where something caved in, and in the middle of this mine disaster, a door would open like a, they would see this door and the door would open up, and somebody would come through the door and give them guidance or give them some direction on how to get out of there. Um, there's some crazy stories that come from underground. And uh, it's really kind of a kind of a crazy thing to think about people, creatures or, or, or some sort of other life form, intelligent life form living within the earth. And what are they doing there? How long have they been there? You know, you never know. Could it be the Russians? It could be. It could be Russians because, you know, they're sneaky. Those are some <laughs> sneaky bastards right there. And keep in mind, like, yeah, about the Russians and about the couple that, like, Linda doesn't like. Okay, these opinions are solely Linda's, and they're not the... shared by VAPI or any of its affiliates. But what do you mean the couple? Oh, the couple. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I just, don't, just keep know... that in mind. Like, it's not reflected on VAPI. Like, if Linda doesn't like Russians in this couple, then that's that's her. Okay? Right. Well, I have a good reason. I mean, honestly. I mean, I, I think... For the Russians or for the couple? Both. <laughs> Both. We like Russians. Oh, communist bastards. I, uh, <laughs> patriotic, like America all the way. America, you know. I don't like. I don't. I don't. Russians. I. You know. They cook vodka. I don't really like. And you know, they they've come up with some things that have really made a hit. I guess in America in a lot of ways. But uh, but you know, Putin is just a crazy bastard. I mean, that guy's just nuts, right? He's got that little man syndrome. Hey, he watches this stuff. He's commented on a couple of our videos. Putin might watch this. If he does, he needs to just, you know, like he he needs to chill on this shit. Keep in mind, Putin. This is the opinions of Linda and VAPI. Yeah. I appreciate your views and your thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as far as the couple, okay, she's a practicing witch. She's one of those that, like, you know, is all about being a witch. And she's got this term, or, or she's got some title or something that she calls herself. Um, and, and and her husband is one of those that commented on one video and and was saying, well, you know, like, you know, like, why are we so mean to the demons? Why are we being mean to the demons? <laughs> You know, like, were you serious right now? Like, these are evil spirits. Like, what? <laughs> like, how are you? <laughs> Why would you not? Like, witches be tripping though. Like, like they think that they think that by exercising or trying to get it, get rid of these demons that were being mean to them. Like, are you serious right now? So yeah, there's some opinions. There's some people out there in the paranormal field that I don't agree with. There's actually the vast majority of them. I'd say I don't agree with. Because I think they're just uh, a little bit on the nutty side. And, uh, you know, my opinion. Everybody's entitled to one. Opinions are like, you know, like, you know what they say. You know that phrase. So, But, um, yeah, that's my opinion. Not necessarily VAPI. But the camera's on me right now. So I can say my opinion and I can state it. And if you don't like it, you know, like whatever. VAPI like, does support people sharing their opinions and, yes, and freedom of speech. So we do, we, we do like that. We like variety. Yes. You know, we like the fact that everybody is able to speak their own opinion. Everybody's entitled to one. Uh, if your opinion does not agree, does not coincide with mine, I'm not going to sit there and tell you, oh, you're wrong, you're wrong. You know what I mean? Like, you have your own opinion. You know, you're able to do that. You're a grown person. So, you know, nobody's going to criticize you because of your opinion varying from mine. Maybe you're Russian. Maybe you are a Russian out there. I'm sure there's good Russians. I'm sure there's bad <laughs> Russians. Putin is not one of them. Putin is not one of the good Russians. And uh, Putin, if you're watching, don't unsub. Yeah. yeah we he, need every one of our 200 subscribers. He looks a little like a weasel. Have you noticed that? He's got a little bit of a weaselly kind I of... I haven't. Like, almost like a possum kind of face. Like no Like George comment. Jones. Have you noticed that? It's a little bit strange. Is that why they, that's not why they call George Jones a possum, is it? Yeah, it looks because he looks like, like a possum? Well, I think so. I think it looks like a 
possum, and I think Putin is right in the right up there too. I think they called him a possum for some other reason. You think so? I'm pretty sure. I thought it was because he looked like. No, because he kind of embraced that. Like he liked being called the possum. I don't yeah. think he would like being called an animal that he looks like. I I think you would, because you think about it. Our next door neighbor, he calls himself Snapper. He's he's got sort of a large nose, and he he's kind of you know like turtle like. I think that's you know some people take criticism and and like oh you know cry about it but some people take that and embrace it yeah, and like he, he you did know, kind of embrace no show jones and you put it on your license plate and you live it you know what i mean you you be that thing and and everybody likes you for it you know so but but putin definitely does have this sort of possum look to him or something like one of his little creatures um but uh yeah definitely my opinion well, everybody, I want to thank you for watching this edition of VAPI Fireside Chats. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, we're recording at least five episodes while we're out here. So that's right. five weeks worth of stuff. So yeah. if you if you do drop a question down below, we'd love to have them. But like I said, please be patient uh, as we're trying to get to them. Um, yeah. And we haven't had any before. I know our last video had a couple on them, but unfortunately, there's no Wi-Fi. We're literally, literally we're off the grid. There. So yeah. I can't even bring that up now, and I didn't prepare. I know. Ahead of time, so yeah, and keep in mind that by the time these videos are posted, maybe Putin has has withdrawn from the Ukraine, and maybe we might like him a little bit more. You know, it's no telling. But either way, <laughs> thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, we do have investigation videos coming. I keep saying that. Yeah. Perhaps by the time this video gets posted, there's already been some. Could be. I don't know, but. Until next time, you got to remember, there's much more to see in the mountains.